All right. Uh, good morning to those of you on the uh, West Coast. Good evening to those of you on the East Coast. My name is Brandon Choi, also co-creator of Movers and Shakers Unlimited. And thanks so much for joining us wherever you're watching from. We're here at 2025 CES, the Consumer Electronics Show. And I do have a special guest here with me talking about an awesome new product, a little special guest that we know have known as Jenny uh, Robot here. But we have uh, here with me uh, Tom Stevens of TomBot. Uh, Tom, how are you doing today? I'm well, thank you so much for having us. Absolutely, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about Jenny here. It has some interesting uh, applications in terms of, you know, what I understand is uh, uh, to be used for, whether it's for, you know, seniors with um, various impairments or even with adults or children that have, uh, you know, mental impairments or, or things of that nature. So please share. Certainly. So, so this is Jenny. She's a fully interactive robotic emotional support animal inspired by my mother who after she was diagnosed with alzheimer's dementia i had to take away her dog for safety reasons uh she was not very happy with me i looked around for substitutes for live animal companions she didn't like anything that i brought home so i realized that there was a very large gap in the market uh so jenny is designed to basically be a companion animal for seniors with dementia or other folks that are struggling with mental health adversities um, and the first one is designed to help treat the behavioral and psychological symptoms of dementia, reducing the need for certain medications. And where our aim is for her to be the first robotic puppy to be an FDA medical device. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, you know, just to, because I feel like that is so loaded in terms of, you know, just that situation, just as you had mentioned, that personal situation of yours. So I appreciate you, you know, sharing that is, I, I'm sure that there are a lot of, other, you know, applications or specifics in terms of what you are trying to accomplish, you know, with this product. Of course, that is the mission. So can you talk a bit about some features that, that you have, you know, with this product to accomplish that said mission? Absolutely. So the key for us is to stimulate emotional attachment. So through the emotional attachment, it actually is uh, triggering positive changes in our brain's reward system. And so that's actually how the health benefits are, are provided. And in our research, we found that seniors have a very strong preference for realism, realism in appearance, realism in texture, and most importantly, realism in behaviors. And so how we achieve that is, uh, uh, first of all, we teamed up with Jim Henson's Creature Shop, the people behind the Muppets and Sesame Street, uh, 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 to do our artistic design. Um, and so the robot has five mechanical subsystems. First of all, it's designed as a lap dog because anything on the ground presents a fall risk for a senior with dementia, so it's not designed to walk, but designed to lay comfortably on somebody's lap. Uh, five mechanical subsystems, the mouth opens and closes, the, uh, she barks, uh, the eyes open and close, the ears move, the head and neck move, and of course you can see the tails wagging there. Uh, and the reason why she moves, uh, to emulate an, uh, 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 an actual robotic puppy, is that she's covered with a sensory system, just like uh, you and you and me. Uh, she can feel how and where she's being touched. She can tell the difference between a simple touch, a slow caress, vigorous pet, and being held. She responds to a long list of voice commands, but only to her name. Uh, we come with a smartphone app that allows for a number of configuration settings, including naming the robot, and then once named, she'll only respond to that given. Uh, she can feel herself being moved, uh, so she knows if she's picked up, she shouldn't squirm around and risk being dropped. Okay. Uh, and a variety of other sensors to help her understand her environment, make an inference as to what that might mean, and then exhibit a behavior from a category of behaviors that's appropriate for that context. So, you know, it sounds like it is an ongoing thing where you guys are constantly trying to uh, uh, recapture that experience that you would have if, if it was, you know, a live animal. So uh, have, have, I'm curious, since you talked about the feature that you have with uh, um, being able to name, uh, uh, name Jenny and her being able to respond to it, how deep have you guys gone with uh, some of the other things that, that personalize it as well with uh, perhaps like smell or things like that? Because, you know, that's that's something that you would have with your pet as well, where they recognize, you know, their owner's, you know, uh, scent and things like that. So 
So our first product, and it's a really good idea. Uh, the first, uh, the first product is designed to be what's called a minimum viable product for a senior with dementia. Um, so we found that those types of uh, features were not essential, but everybody likes their puppy to be the way their puppy should be. They have an individual sort of experience with the puppy, and through their configuration settings, we're able to help them do that, help uh, uh, make the personality changes that they find most appropriate. For example, frequently in late stage dementia, uh, seniors are, they have trouble stimulating the, the robot to, to react. Uh, they have, um, maybe they've lost uh, much of their verbal capability, maybe they don't move as well, and it's difficult for them to actually stimulate the robot. Uh, she's snoring. Uh, I'm convinced our engineers have designed her programming to uh, go to sleep as soon as I start talking. <laughs> Wake up, young lady. Wake up. Um, anyway, uh, so so we can, in the configuration settings, we can make the robot more easily uh, stimulated, more animated, so that it, it takes less for the robot to be responsive. Conversely, we have uh, some people, seniors and, and otherwise, that have pretty severe uh, fear of dogs, uh, canophobia. And what we've learned in our research is the barking uh, can stimulate uh, a really uh, negative experience, negative startle reflex. Uh, reflex. Uh, and so we have the ability not just to mute the barking, but to disable the barking behavior entirely. And we can eliminate rapid movement in the, uh, or disable rapid movement in the robot. So the robot's just quiet and calm all the time. Um, and so things like that, where we're able to make the robot sort of more particular to an individual's preferences, uh, think, simple things like turning up or down the volume of the barking if it's, uh, if it's too loud or if you're in a noisy room and you're not hearing it at all, or a person might be hard of hearing. Um, uh, uh, in our first, so our first model is really designed to be uh, for seniors with dementia, but it has been pre-ordered for a lot of different uh, people for a lot of different uses. We were actually surprised uh, when we did a survey of our pre-order and waitlist customers that 56% of those that responded uh, said that they were actually ordering it for a different purpose. Uh, it could have been a child with autism. Uh, or other disabilities, uh, an adolescent or an adult with severe anxiety, depression, suicide risk, um, PTSD, uh, uh, OCD, uh, uh, ADHD. So there, there are a great many people that have mental health challenges where they struggle, uh, and also physical health challenges, where they struggle with uh, with maintaining a live animal as a companion. And their hope is that that either this product or a future product from Tombot will be will be able to provide that same level of companionship. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, so. Uh, with with all of that uh, being said, can you talk a bit about the, I know you were talking about there being a wait list and things like that. So can you share with us uh, availability? So where where do we stand with, you know, folks having access to this product? Very important question. So the, uh, uh, so there's a reason why realistic robotic animals haven't existed prior to this. It's very, very difficult technology, a tremendous diversity of skill sets that are required to execute on this. We're fortunate that both internally and externally, we have a wonderful team of people, uh, 21 people currently working on the robot, um, but it just takes time. Um, we're just completing our alpha, final alpha pre-production. I have that puppy over here, our final alpha pre-production uh, puppy. Uh, the production version will actually be slightly younger, a little bit smaller uh, than the Jenny on the bed. Uh, and once again, uh, same, same, purpose though, uh, with the robot. We're just finishing our alpha pre-production. We'll be in beta shortly. And as soon as we have betas working the way we and our customers want them to, we'll lock everything down and begin our production ramp up. Um, we're hoping late, uh, uh, by late 2025. So beginning getting started with clinical studies a little later this year, hopefully by late 2025, uh, fulfilling, uh, 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 paid customer orders. And if ain't we run into any bumps in the road, that could slide into 2026. But we're we're getting close. Uh, awesome. Awesome. And uh, this is always uh, fun because obviously, you know, you're here to uh, 
to demonstrate your product, but this is Vegas, this is CES, so you wouldn't be here if you weren't also a fan of a lot of the stuff that's here. So I have to ask outside of, you know, your commitments here, Tom, you know, what, or you, Jenny, <laughs> um, you know, what What are some uh, plans that you have uh, this week at CES, just for yourself? Uh, well, this is uh, not a lot of personal time this week uh, for me. So uh, we actually have family in Vegas, and in the past we've been able to take in a Raiders game, so that. So that's been fun. Uh, I really don't know uh, what we're going to squeeze in this week. We arrived on Saturday. Today's Monday. We arrived on Saturday and we'll be departing again on Saturday. Hopefully have a chance to maybe squeeze in a show Friday night after the uh, after the uh, event ends. Um, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. There you guys have it. I have uh, uh, Tom uh, demonstrating his product known as Jenny, the robotic uh, Labrador. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be safe out there and see you guys soon. Bye now.